Hi guys, today we're going to spend some time taking a first look at your e-portfolio, which stands for electronic portfolio. You may have remembered me mentioning on the first day that your electronic portfolio is going to be a year-long project. It's going to be a compilation of academic and career tech information that you're going to produce on a website um, actually using Google Sites, which, which is a free service. And you're going to slowly be filling it all year long. And then fourth quarter, you're going to turn in the published site for a major grade. It'll make up the majority of your fourth quarter grade. It is not a difficult grade. However, if you do not stay on top of it throughout the year, it'll be very difficult to complete all in one quarter. So make sure every time we visit the ePortfolio, you complete the task that I assign. Today, we are going to actually begin your portfolio. Um, I'm going to show you how to get there, and then I'm going to show you what I expect for the home page. So on Google Classroom, we're going to look at the assignment, taking a first look at the ePortfolio, okay? And I do have um, a sheet on there, taking a first look at the ePortfolio. This will outline what we're going to have in our portfolio. So we're going to have a home page, an academics page, a career narrative page, a research project page, a resume page, a career tech program page, letters of recommendation page, and my goal page. But today, we are simply going to be working on the home page. And the home page is going to have five different things I'm looking for. Okay. But how do we get to Google Sites? I'm going to venture to say that many of you have never created a Google website before. So what's going to happen is I'm going to ask you to go ahead and go to Google, just Google's home page. There's various ways to get to it, but I find this way to be the easiest. So there are little squares up in the corner. It looks like a grid. I actually call that the Google waffle. You'll hear me use that term many times this year. You can click on that Google waffle to get to many of the items and applications in the Google suite. We're gonna click on the waffle. And what I'd like you to find is Google Sites. So we went to Google's homepage, we clicked on the waffle, and then you're going to click Sites. When you get to Sites, you're going to notice it kind of looks like Google Docs. They've set it up very similarly, okay? Yours is going to be empty, though, because you've not created anything, okay? Mine has a few in it um, because... I uh, have created multiple portfolios before. And actually, I'm going to change to the test student account just so you can see what it looks like from the start. So bear with me for a moment. Okay, so once you're in the test or once you're in the Google Sites, you are going to select blank. going to take a moment to generate. Please be patient. As this is loading, let me tell you that no one on the internet will have access to your site until you publish it fourth quarter and state who in the privacy settings that you're going to allow to view your page. So do not worry throughout the year that random people are going to be able to be on your site. This is not true. Right now it is private for only you and then when you share it with me. Okay? So here is your Google site. It's very simplistic, not tons of options, um, but it is nice because the functionality and logistics of the site are very easy to figure out. The first thing I'm going to have you do is come up where it says Untitled Site, and I'd like you to write ePortfolio. That's little e, big P, O, R, T, F, O, L, I, O. Everyone's going to call their website an ePortfolio. It is going to underline the word because it is a made-up word that I created based upon the words electronic and portfolio. Okay? 
Once you have named your site, where it says your page title, I would like you to put your full name. Okay, and then go ahead and click off. You'll note up here that just like Google Docs or Google Slides, it constant, constantly saves your information. So you'll see all changes saved in Drive. No instance should you have to go up and hit some sort of save button. As long as your interconnect, internet connection is good, it'll automatically save for you, okay? So this is the first view someone's going to have of your site. So you're gonna have your name, the word ePortfolio, and then I would choose some sort of background banner. You have two options for this. You can go to change image and click on select image. Google has various images that you can choose from. Um, mine are slowly loading. There's actually a whole page here that you can choose from. So let me pick one just so you can see what it looks like and hit select. It will adjust it for readability, which means it'll make the background a little bit darker so that way your name pops out because you don't have a lot of options for font types and font size. So the website generator will automatically adjust your font and your backgrounds, okay? I do have a lot of students, since this is career-based, they'll go out and find an image that relates to, the, or to their career tech program. So let's go ahead and go to Google Image. And I'm going to pretend for the sake of today that I'm a culinary arts student. So maybe I want something culinary inspired as my background. So I might put cooking spices. Let's see what sort of images I get. Okay, if there's a particular spice that I like or an image that I like, what I'm going to do is click on the image. Google Sites will not let you copy and paste, so any images you want to use must be saved to your drive. So I'm going to right click, save image as. In your instance, you would save it to your drive, but I'm on a Surface Pro, so I'm going to save it to my desktop. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to my ePortfolio and I'm going to click change image, but instead of select image, I'm going to click upload. I'm then going to find the image I just saved. And it's going to adjust for readability once again. And you'll see as it's adjusting, it's making the background slightly darker. That way your name pops up just a little bit more. Okay, so what's next? What you're going to do next, according to the document, is that I would like you to put some sort of professional picture of you. That can be a picture where you are maybe in lab or a picture of you in your uniform. A lot of students will use a senior photo. What I do not want is a photo with any sort of Snapchat filter in it or a photo that you've taken just in your home randomly or with friends. I want something that looks professional, okay? Whatever photo you use, you do have to have it saved to your drive, okay? Um, to grab that photo, what we're going to do is click Images and click Upload. Earlier, I saved a picture of a culinary student on my desktop. And I'm going to put the picture on here. You can enlarge it a little bit if you desire. You can also move it, but I'm going to keep it to the left. When you're in these panels, you can change the color, but you don't have a lot of options. You have a regular color, which is just white. You have a color for emphasis, which is a light gray. You can choose a blue 
or you can choose an image to put in the background. Just be careful because sometimes that um, will look very difficult on your, on your um, website, especially if you have text, okay? I'm going to use the gray, okay? After I have the image, the next thing on the list, number three, is to write a paragraph explaining the purpose of your ePortfolio. I've actually written this paragraph for you. You simply just need to copy and paste it and put in your own information. So what you're going to do is go ahead and start highlighting where it says welcome and then end it at the bottom of the paragraph. Right click, copy, go back to your portfolio. Now, this is very important. When you go to do add text, never, ever, ever add a footer. Sometimes down at the bottom of your page, you'll see something that says add footer. Do not click that button because what's going to happen if you add text in that footer, it's going to add it to every page of your website. Just pretend this button is not even here. But to put text, beside my picture or below my picture, I'm gonna click text box over here in the right side panel. Then I'm gonna paste that paragraph. I'm gonna go ahead and put my information, you insert your name, and then change your telephone number and change your web address or your email address, please. Now, if you wanted to, you could move the text box up the side, or you could keep it below. Either way, that is entirely up to you, okay? You could also make it a little larger if you wanted to by calling it a subheading. That's possible as well, okay? So this says, welcome to my electronic portfolio. My name is Michelle Karn, and I created this portfolio so that you can better understand my educational career. Feel free to browse each page and look through my links. You will find career-based work, academic projects, and personal information that will help you in understanding both me and my goals. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at your number or your email address. Okay, so that is the third thing that I want on here. The fourth thing is to include any image related to your career tech field. That can be an image that you took. So for instance, if I'm in culinary arts and I baked a cake last year that I'm very proud of, I could put that image on there. Or you can find a stock image on Google Image, images that relate directly to your career tech field, okay? Earlier, I saved a picture of a cake, and I'm going to pretend that I baked that cake because maybe in the future, I wish to own my own bakery and make wedding cakes, okay? So again, I'm going to cl click on images, then upload. I'm going to go to my desktop. Hopefully, you've saved an image in your drive. Click on the picture of the cake that I have. For me personally, I'd like to move the picture over to the right this time. Again, I like that gray color, so I'm gonna change that to gray, okay? And then there's the fourth item. Again, any image that relates to your career tech program. The fourth item, is, or I'm sorry, the fifth item is an introductory paragraph. This is a paragraph you're gonna write about yourself. I want you to include your home school, your career tech school and the years attended, your career tech program and why you joined the program, what career you hope to obtain after CTC or what college and major you hope to enter. And this paragraph should be at least five sentences. It can be more though. Okay, so this time I'm just going to type. Again, do not click add footer. I'm going to add a text box. I'm going to move that text box up here. And I'm going to say, we can speak in past tense as if you've graduated. I have graduated from Springfield High School in 2021. However, during my junior 
and senior years, I attended the Springfield Clark CTC. I was enrolled in the Culinary Arts program. After graduation, I plan on attending Culinary Institute of America in New York City. In the future, I hope to own my own bakery and specialize in wedding cakes or whatever the case is, okay? Just give me a little blurb about yourself. It's up to you if you wanna speak in you know, future tense, like you've graduated or you're about to graduate, that's entirely up to you, okay? So those are the items that I want. Um, you've got e-portfolio, you've got a banner background, you've got your name, you have an image of yourself, and then an introductory paragraph, you have an image related to your career tech program, and then a brief paragraph that introduces you and your future plans. Now, all changes will automatically save. If you'd like to preview what your site looks like so far, come up here to the little icon of the screen and click preview. It'll open a new window. And then this will show you once your website is published, what it'll look like to the general population, okay? There is even a cell phone view, which I actually per prefer the cell phone view. If I were looking at my own site on a cell phone, this is what it would look like. And I have to tell you, I've actually had students use their electronic portfolios in interviews or when they were networking with potential employers and they shared their website with that employer and the employer was very, very impressed, okay? So I hope it's as useful to you as well. And remember, this is just page one. We have many, many pages to go, but this is what we're working on today, okay? Please make sure that you go back to classroom and turn in what you've done so far. So what you're gonna do, let me unsubmit because I did this with an earlier class. My apologies. So what you're going to need to do is click Add or Create, Google Drive, If you've recently worked on it, it should pop up right as the first item. If not, you can search ePortfolio, okay? So you're gonna click on it, give it a moment to load, and then you're gonna select Turn In. And then turn in one more time. After I'm done grading it, I will then send you back your ePortfolio so you can add to it, okay? If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Be creative and have fun. Thanks, guys.